Hey listeners, one of the most important questions that you're going to be asking yourself is, what is it that I can do to do a better job at self-care? Where do I begin? How do I make sure that I'm doing the things that are really right for me? And I have an opportunity for you to work with me. Um, It's in a small group. These opportunities are very rare these days, Um, but I am forming a 12-week group. We start January 9th, and we're meeting on Saturdays at 1030 Eastern. Um, So no matter where you are, I hope that you can make that time work and you could join um, a small circle of folks who want to learn and grow and practice body kindness, who want resilience from body shame, who want to stop the diet roller coaster, or who want to very work on a very specific aspect of their personal well-being. You're welcome in our group, and I really invite you to learn more about this group program and other offers that I have going on at bodykindnessbook.com slash offers. Welcome to the Body Kindness Podcast. I'm your host, Rebecca Scritchfield, and I'm here to help you find your inner caregiver. You'll have more compassion, less shame, and the tools you need to deal with a culture that just does not want you to be free to give yourself fierce love. You are welcome and you belong in our community where we value your well-being, we share our experiences and support each other on the body kindness journey, and we know that your health and your worth is not dependent on your weight. If you would like to enjoy self-care, be less self-critical, and make your life about more than your health routines, join us at bodykindnessbook.com slash start. Hey, Julie, welcome to Body Kindness. Hi, Rebecca. I'm so glad to be here. (laughs) I have to give you a special reward and all I have is a pen. So... (laughs) You know, mail that to Canada. (laughs) You know, maybe it's a a virtual gift. (laughs) Um, But no, you are my first guest that is part of my new sort of plan for the Body Kindness Podcast to also have a YouTube presence um, that is actually real video. And um, I so appreciate the flexibility when I know about an hour ago, I said, so can we do this thing on video? And you're like, sure. (laughs) And you know, that's a big part of what we do on the body shame conference videos too, is just go for it. Yeah, I love it. Well, thank you. Thank you for going for it with me. And there's, there's so many fun rewards of getting to do that, which is yes, talking about this theme, which is, uh, why we need to brave body shame now in 2021 and all that good stuff. So just for any listeners who are first or viewers, see, I'm getting used to that. <laughs> I've always recorded on video with guests. Cause I love the eye contact. It was just, I was not recording with plans to put on YouTube. Oh, um, okay. yeah. So, so new folks, welcome, welcome to body kindness. Briefly body kindness is a philosophy that I created when I hit my own rock bottom, um, with dieting and diet culture after years and years of thinking the healthy thing to do, um, if I cared about health and well-being, was just follow the latest diet plan. And oh, it's such a long story. Uh, so I won't get into it now, but just know that it really, to me, a body kindness philosophy and practice is all about that feeling that you have when you know that life can be better and you want to create a better life. And you know, the really hard part for some folks is there's a part that's like, but I still care about my health. So what do I do if I don't ever want to diet again? And there's always, it, not always, but usually a part that's like, but, but is it okay to let go of weight concerns? And I sincerely hope we can get to that in our chat today. But, you know, I always say no one can tell you what body kindness is or isn't, but, you know, in the philosophy of body kindness, it's about um, three core principles, love, connect, and care um, for yourself and others and fully commit to a healthy well-being, which is mental health and physical health. And how you create that is really um, up to you because it's going to depend on your interests, values, and goals 
and the podcast has over 160 episodes. So feel free to listen to your heart's content, subscribe, rate, review, all that good stuff. And um, if you want a guide and breaking down from diet culture, I would highly recommend my book or audio book, um, Body Kindness, which you could get anywhere. And um, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Is that what is, do you have, is that beautiful you? I recognize the book. On, oh, Rosie Molinari. I love Rosie. Yeah, I've got oh, a few good books here. <laughs> we found each other like years ago when Twitter was new, like that many years ago. Okay. And Rosie is a wonderful human being. I love talk about a great book, even for kicking off the new year and that those daily prompts. So, oh, this is going to be so fun. <laughs> Enough about me. I can't wait to hear more about who you are, what you do and, and discuss why do we need to brave body shame now and in 2021 and beyond. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So I do a lot of things. Uh, that is one thing that people might say about me. I first and foremost, am a counselor. So for me, when I work with clients from the start, I've worked with body image and self-esteem and through the years have morphed into being more specific about fat liberation and all of that type of context and mm -hmm. really opening up what body image looks like. Mm -hmm. So uh, private practice, I do counseling. I also teach at the local college here uh, where I am, which is an amazing experience for me because I get to bring in um, sizeism mm. to one of the class, to a few of the classes that I teach and it's never been done before. So that was really exciting that I get some autonomy to create that part and see younger minds, they're college level, but younger minds sort of get really excited about a concept they've never heard before. Yeah. Uh, I That's also, so powerful because yeah. it's like a structural change. It's like a, a change within the system. That's yeah. so important. Yes. I was very excited to be handed a couple of classes that I could do that with. Mm -hmm. um, I also teach yoga and mm -hmm. I took the yoga for round bodies training because what I found was I was so in my head when I attended yoga classes, but I couldn't get any Zen out of it. You were I constantly was, in worry or pose. <laughs> yeah. And I was wondering, how do I do that with my body? Mm -hmm. Right. Oh. So I started to adapt myself, but I'm like, I need more training on this. So I did my regular yoga teacher training and then I did the yoga for round bodies. And now people know that my classes come with some laughter and telling you that you're, you, you know, you can shift your belly and just move it out of the way. And mm -hmm. that's okay. And if your thighs don't do this, that's okay. And if your arms are short like mine, that's okay. Because a lot of times we don't connect to our body when we're experiencing body shame either, right? So mm -hmm. we blame our body, mm -hmm. uh, which is a big part of actually why we need this kind of conference because we're walking around blaming our bodies for having short, short arms and we can't do a headstand, but it's because our arms are short. <laughs> like it's not because we're incapable, but like if I, my head is, mm -hmm. I can't do that without compacting my neck, which is actually really unhealthy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, and even the idea of, and I love yoga. I talked about how it, I feel like yoga saved me twice mm -hmm. first with body concerns and that shows up in the book. But secondly, with a surprise diagnosis of anxiety mm -hmm. uh, pre COVID actually. <laughs> so yeah. uh, thankfully I had that wave and got the help and support and, you know, I'm still human. So working with it, but, um, I feel like I came to yoga through asana and I had the body privilege that you know, allowed me to, to, I was still in my head, right. But with the body privilege, not nearly as much as other people who have larger bodies, who didn't have teachers like you, who not even like modifications, but how about the point of let's all be in this community space and, and, and be compassionate with ourselves and each other and be where we need to be. Um, but through the more I evolve with yoga, it's, not even about asana anymore. And I think when you're a teacher and you can be the one saying that and bringing that to people, even if you know that feeling when you're saying it, you're like, is it landing? Is it landing? <laughs> Trusting that it is landing. And you may never hear all the feedback of the impact that you made, but trusting that you made that impact. Definitely. And, and I think that's a really good definition or a distinction between asana and a yoga practice, right? Mm -hmm. Because I always talk about yoga off the mat, right? Because people mm -hmm. don't really necessarily understand that asana is a separate sort of mm -hmm. just physical poses, whereas yoga can be a, a full philosophy. So 
I really enjoyed that bringing people into connection and having people in larger bodies find, cause I put plus size yogi, like this is what you're getting. You're coming to me. <laughs> this is, this is your teacher. Mm-hmm. And so there's so many people who come because they're comfortable because I'm similarly looking mm-hmm. to that, which is really mm-hmm. cool. Um, I also live with fibromyalgia. So sometimes the practices are really low and slow. And I realize that other people actually like that regardless of their body um, concerns. Right. They might be coming in like a tornado thinking they need like, um, you know, the fire practice, you know, in the solar and they really need a lunar. Yes. And, And I love that you can show up and hold this space as the teacher, meet your needs with this full permission that that self care is supporting a collective well being in the room, and it's also teaching them something because we all have parts that are just like you really need to give that solar right to you know, yeah. and so it's good that you can do that and offer that. It's yeah, it's it is really a, necessary and brave. Yes, yes, yes thank you. It was a. <laughs> it's not local where I am, so mm-hmm. I'm going to teach myself and bring it local. That's yeah. really a lot of a lot of what I do. And that's kind of what happened with the conference is I wasn't seeing something for my clients, mm-hmm. right? I was going to some amazing conferences. You and I were at the same conference. Yes. The uh, weight, international weight stigma conference yes. which was wonderful. Yes. Yeah. We were both speaking there. And mm-hmm. after that conference, cause I'd done one the previous month as well, um, for the national eating disorder information center in Toronto. Mm. So I'd done back-to-back conferences and they were amazing and they helped me as a practitioner. But what about my clients? Mm -hmm. right? And I can bring it back to them, but collectively they're seeing so much stuff Mm -hmm. on social media that is not helping them process positively between my sessions, Mm -hmm. you know, like between our sessions, I want people to be able to find great content, but Mm -hmm. it seeps in there, that negative stuff. And you and I talked, are going to talk a little bit more about that. I think for sure. Yeah. Current content, but I needed this conference to happen so that my clients and clients across the world could understand that they're not alone because that's Mm -hmm. the biggest part about this body shame is that we get into a silo of it's just me. I'm the only one who feels this way or my body is wrong and I don't know how to fix that. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was really about instead of having something just for practitioners or something that was too academic to be fun. Mm-hmm. love academia sometimes, mm-hmm. but sometimes <laughs> we just need to have coffee and chat so that everybody can just be on the same field. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I almost feel like sometimes like the studying of things is the safety net because then that means you don't have to go in and do the real work, the experiential work. Yeah. Because I would argue that, you know, any cl- clinician who is at all on a path of health at every size, intuitive eating, a body kindness practice, right? Those yeah. anti diet realms. I mean, do your own work. And this conference can be a great way to listen and learn because it's virtual. You have amazing speakers. It's social justice informed and organized, which I was like, I couldn't hit my sponsor button fast enough. I was like, yes, you know, and especially as somebody who's living with multiple privileges, it's like, I, I recognize that I don't feel that this is an event that's like, hey, Rebecca Scritchfield at your size, you really personally need this. And this is a way that I can help amplify and support important work Mm -hmm. and also benefit by attending and benefit by helping my clients. Mm -hmm. And so I still get that benefit by by supporting and inhabiting something that I know is helpful for collective well-being. And so anyone who's listening um, or watching, I mean, visit the website. Um, There's awesome registration options, amazing speakers. What are some of the things that you're really excited about for the conference? Oh, I just got goosebumps just thinking about it. Um, (laughs) It's so funny. It's it's just, it's like my second child. I only have one kid and Mm. the conference is my second. I think for me, the most exciting part is when we start getting feedback. Mm So last year we had feedback that people were using it to help with meal support. Actually, Mm -hmm. Um, we had one person watching and she would watch it while she ate so that she felt like she wasn't alone. I thought, what an amazing way to use the conference. We had other people who were sending us feedback about seeing their own bodies online, um, which was awesome in a way that was their story. Because I think 
what I saw on Instagram was people have stories, which I think is mm. amazing. Like the, the actual stories, right. But then they disappear. Mm. And so this was a way of bringing all of that together in a accessible way. Mm-hmm. And so we always want the conference to be virtual because I think that that's important. We always want it to be accessible financially. So our early bird pricing is on and it's in Canadian. So that Ooh. helps. I mean, I know, right? <laughs> like that's like four cents maybe American. Like great for Americans. Mm-hmm. And we try and keep those things low, but we also have a free option where people can get about four videos, five videos a day sent to them and they can watch what they want that day for 24 hours. Mm-hmm. So again, we wanted to have different multiple platforms, but the feedback, the feedback is what I love. And I think for me, knowing that people use the conference information to better support themselves is amazing. Mm -hmm. And we actually do a whole workbook um, to go with the paid registration that incorporates the three takeaways that each of our participants give us and journal prompts. So long after the conference is done, you have the takeaways, you have journal prompts, and you can keep doing the work, which I think is really exciting. Oh my gosh. I love, I love journaling prompts. I talked about expressive writing and body kindness. I do journaling with clients all the time. Um, and, and even the resistant ones, you know, they'll, they, you know, they could do like a micro prompt or, you know, we'll kind of get a sense of like, what's coming in the space and like, Oh, that's a good thing to let's get some quiet time, some silence and some journaling introspection. And it, it almost always helps. I think that's so great. Let's take a quick pause from this conversation for an important message from Bernie Salazar. Hey listeners, Bernie Salazar here, asking you to support our show. Make your contribution at gofundme.com forward slash body kindness and 100% of any amount you can give goes to offset the production expenses. If 20 people can donate $25, it pays for this episode. Again, that's gofundme.com forward slash body kindness to chip in and support our show. We're so grateful to have you as a listener and we thank you for your support. Who are some of the speakers that you have lined up? Oh, I should have printed the list. We have, um, what I love about our conference is we don't just have big names Mm -hmm. because we think everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. So we have, I'm, I'm literally opening my thing because open it. Yeah. I know. Okay, good. (laughs) Let's give um, the URL too, actually. So people can visit it. So bravingbodyshame.com. Great. Nice and simple. Awesome. Um, so we have Virgie Tovar. We have Cherished Styles, who is on Instagram under Styles Counseling and is just Mm -hmm. lovely. Jackie Barbie, who does Sunny Bee Yoga. She is so fun. And Danielle Catton. I'm really hoping I'm saying their last names right. And Danielle is Canadian, kind of just down the highway from me, and (laughs) has been doing this really great recreation of thin people's posts of how they like morph their body to look thinner and then she does it. And, and it's just been amazing. Like her, her posts are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, We have Pia who did uh, is mixed fat chick on Instagram and Shira Rose and Anna Sweeney and Gloria from Nalgona positivity pride. Oh yes. Yeah. Like we just, we have so many different um, stories. Uh, Caitlin Anderley and I spoke, um, she's from reframe your story. And she talks about her weight loss surgery and how that impacted her negatively. Mm-hmm. And that's a, just a really, uh, again, a really interesting story that I hadn't heard before. Rachel Milner, mm-hmm. uh, Victoria Wellsby from over in the UK, mm-hmm. Fierce Fatty, yeah, uh, Ruby Smith Diaz. Um, I don't know if you've heard of her. She is a trainer in Vancouver, BC, and she does personal training out there. So. One of the other hosts, Alicia, is on the West Coast. So mm-hmm. she knew Ruby, and that's a really great connection there. Reagan Chastain, Ashley Bennett, Meredith Noble, Melissa Toller, yeah. Ash from the Fat Lip Podcast. Yeah. Um, like just over and over and over. Yeah. Over and over. Yeah. Amazing people. Oh, so yeah. At least half of 
uh, the speakers were on my podcast. And so I'm just like, I was like, in my head, I was giving little (laughs) checks and I was like, Ooh, and getting new people to find and follow. So, I mean, that is like, you know, so first step, visit the website, find out who's speaking, follow them. You're going to get great stuff from that. Check it out. And as soon as you can, you know, figure out, you know, your finances and like there's flexible options, but like go ahead and register and sign up and participate. I know that I'm going to have, oh, you do an awesome swag bag. Cause I know I donated some stuff yeah. to it. So there's going to be lots of cool things that, um, what do you want to say about that? Just that kind of you're getting oh. people to contribute things so that in addition yeah. to the education content, there might be other opportunities to help you continue yes. braving. So we have in Jan, so we've been doing giveaways. So right now we have a giveaway with the plus bus, which is two $100 gift cards um, that we gave away in December. But in January, when the other pod, the podcast part of this launches, the audio podcast, ah. um, <laughs> we'll be doing book giveaways. So cool. we have connected with so many great authors, yourself included, I believe. I, um, I hope so. If not, yeah. I'm taking my books. <laughs> I know. Um, I have one here. I have okay. one at my office. Or I, have, <laughs> I have one out with a client right now. Um, but we have a bunch of great authors who have said yes please let me help you with giveaways. So January is kind of the month of book giveaway right. or a couple <laughs> of weeks before the conference. And then the swag bag, every participant gets and it's discount codes for all sorts of different things. Yep. Um, so we have the swag bag and that's just automatically you get that. All the giveaways um, on top of the paid registrants who are put into the physical giveaways, we also have a giveaway every month for an upgrade membership from a free membership to an upgrade. So even if right now you're only able to do the free one, that's okay. Get on the free list so you mm-hmm. get all the information. Right. And people can upgrade the first couple of days of the conference too if they find that they're like, oh, I really want to keep this downloadable content for yeah. the rest of my life. They can do that for the first couple of days of the conference as well. That's awesome. That's so cool. Well, hopefully we can talk more about the podcast. And um, but you know, you would you did bring up um did I just say podcast? Eh, see, and this is why I said no edits. Okay. Uh, it was so funny because I was like, uh, you know, wait for it. Here comes the brain. Oh yeah. I did say the wrong word. Well, but, um, yeah, this is already going to be up on, on, you know, YouTube so yeah. that folks can, um, get some, you know, like I said, early ideas for things to follow. And we're all kind of around this time of year thinking about the next year and, anticipating that wave of diet culture as soon as the ball drops, yeah, you know, and I'm very curious about what's going to happen given COVID and the global pandemic. And it's just like, you know, oh, it's still going to be there, but I'm just curious how it's going to look. But alas, um, we can brave body shame and we could start right now by following others on social and, and, you know, getting psyched for the conference. But yes, it's, you know, I wanted to make sure that before I hit record, you know, how you felt about engaging in a little bit of conversation around sort, you know, I mean, I would say the, the bigger picture idea is like, how do we process our feelings, especially, you know, around the time of year when people are upholding body oppression, basically saying, yeah, we want to take your money because your body isn't good enough. And the way that you're going to get a happier, healthier, stronger, and better life is through pursuing weight loss. And then now, oh, this diet and disguise. Oh, it's a lifestyle. All the buzzwords (laughs) that we'll hear and see. And, you know, it's almost like you, you do your work and you, and you feel kind of like strong enough, like, okay, I think you can handle this, et cetera. And then something really surprising happens or could happen at any time. And I, I really feel that, you know, literally over the last 24 hours since we've recorded this, that that's kind of one of those waves. And it has to do with Lizzo, who I think so many people love. I mean, what a talented person, human being, creator, musician, uh, flautist, all the things. And there are some people who've been hurt by her Instagram. There was a post and stories that have to do with her doing a detox. And yeah, so I guess I'll just sort of put it out there and kind of ask you a little bit more about 
What have you heard in the story? Have clients been coming to you? How do we want to, you know, unpack this situation and talk in terms of specifically with Lizzo? And I have a few other ideas that have been coming out culturally as well that we might be able to get to. Certainly. Yeah. I think, I think the thing is to remember that everybody has body autonomy. Mm -hmm. So we are able to do whatever we want with our bodies. Mm -hmm. The problem lies in the outcome in the comment section. Right. Mm. So one of the things that I noticed with the Lizzo thing is that people are then praising her for manipulating her body in Mm -hmm. a way she's allowed to do. Mm -hmm. But then my concern as the mom of a daughter, and I think you have daughters Mm -hmm. as well, um, and probably a lot of people are thinking is Mm -hmm. now what if I guess I can do that detox cleanse? I guess Mm -hmm. I can get those kind of results. And people are falling down in in that sort of wave of, okay, Lizzo now says it's okay to manipulate my body, Mm -hmm. right? Whereas before she said it was okay to love my body. Mm -hmm. So there's a confusion that happens as well. That Mm -hmm. is really interesting. Um, And I think that anybody who says that they're body positive and then shifts 180 and we take it that they're not body positive anymore, which is again, a very gray, <laughs> fine line um, mm-hmm. that has a lot of contention, I think, in the body positive world, Right, um, can be really disheartening and yes. harmful to people. And it's not Lizzo's fault. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not our fault. It's diet culture that has permeated these kind of stories and doesn't allow us to come away from it unharmed. Right. And yeah, you know, it's the pieces of the puzzle that I have been putting together because I got, I got a lot of clients messaging me and sort of like, Hey, did you see it? And then sort of like, Oh, I think I need you, you know, for a little kind of quick crisis chat. Lizzo has, so this is what I know so far. She actually did recently talk about how she was really feeling harmed by comments. And so one of the things that I would want everybody who's hearing us talk about this, you know, whether it's still very current or sort of like yesterday's, that's last year's news, right? Um, But um, was that we all are human and that, and that she is existing in this world and is oppressed, you know, no matter her talent and money and, you know, ways that she's been able to fight for her own autonomy and liberation, you know, it is, it is difficult to be alive right now in, in COVID and where we are in our racism reckoning. And it would make a lot of sense if she had any emotional difficulty and reconciling those thoughts into body shame thoughts and then have people commenting, you know, how I care about your health or whatnot. And so one thing is I wish her well and hope she's okay because you're right. We do have body autonomy and you know, it, it is shocking to see and feel, but, you know, Aubrey Gordon, your fat friend who was recently on a podcast, she just said, listen, I would never judge a higher weight person's actions on what they do to survive in a world who doesn't want you to exist. And that really helped in, in, in me processing. And it was something I process with clients to, to look at it from that frame is we don't know what she's going through. We don't know, you know, what she might be needing. And cause it was, it was almost like I saw two parts of her in, in her stories. I saw this part talking about like glowing skin, right. And trying to make it not be about weight. But then she did these before and afters and side-by-sides. And when I looked into her face and eyes, it felt, I felt a sense of sadness, almost that she herself might've been conflicted about doing that. And, you know, total speculation because I just didn't properly research before, but being a huge Lizzo fan, I did see in the summer where she was doing some, some vegan eating and was tagging this, 
person. And I don't even know yet if it's the same person. And I don't judge people who eat vegetarian or vegan. I I fully support that there can be really ethical ways of doing so. And I remember watching that and wondering. And even then, I didn't really see anything that was like super diety about what she was trying to put out there. And so, you know, but when I look at the whole picture, it's almost like if I were to say the things that personally have me holding space, you know, I'd hold space for anyone who's feeling harmed by this because I can imagine how it must hurt. And how has Lizzo been struggling and coping through all these things? And, you know, when you look at what she linked out to, even if for herself, you know, I felt that one foot in, one foot out where you're trying to make it about energy and glowing skin. And, but then with the side by side or what she linked out to in the program, it being a detox, it being semi me your befores and afters, and all of it being about weight loss, yeah. the mere association, uh, use of her power to kind of amplify and validate where she can't control what this other entity is doing. It, it sucks to be in such a position of power. Where every little thing you do could have this harmful impact, but people are definitely hurt and harmed by seeing that. And who knows what's going to come out of it. Lizzo needs her space to be a human being and do her own healing work. And also you're right. It's like, to diet culture. Oh, I don't know if that's a bad YouTube thing, but <laughs> diet culture sucks. Right. Yeah. And turn that fierce energy away from Lizzo, empathy and fierce love to Lizzo and yeah. fierce, you know, you suck dismantling toward <laughs> diet culture. Okay. I yeah. went on forever. What else do you want to say about it now that I've said? I I think for me, this is why the conference exists so that Mm -hmm. there's different air about the world. There's different words out there. This is why your content, my content, the content of all the people we're going to link to throughout last year's conference and this Mm -hmm. year's conference is so vital to be in the world because January 18th, the conference launches and that's just shy of three weeks into a new year. And I rock think bottom. Just- is that strategic? Cause that is yeah. the rock bottom moment of the, yes. of, you're trying to catch anyone who wanted one last spin on the tire roller coaster. You got it. Yeah. Last year it was the end of February. This year we're like, now nah, we got to bump that up. We got to oh, bump that up. So yeah. That was totally strategic. Yeah. Oh man. It is. It is. And you know, I can't stress enough the power of collective healing and the power of healing from other people's stories. And so that's the beauty of us being able to get this out now. And then we'll have the podcast out, you know, early January, you know, hopefully by January 4th, 5th, right? And so you can pre-conference, find the speakers, follow them, register, you know, at any level you can and immerse yourself now, brave body shame now, learn and grow. Let the healing begin because we do need it now. And we're going to need it in January and January 18th. And we're going to need it in all of 2021 and 2031. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I would love to to lose my anti-diet culture job. Trust me, I would love to lose it. Amen. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm so grateful for you and all the conference organizers, all the speakers, all the people who are donating and who care mm-hmm. about supporting and amplifying. And, you know, the, the website once again is bravingbodyshame.com. All the juicy links are going to be in the mm-hmm. show notes. And thank you for everything you do and for being an existing in the world. You're so needed. Thank you for you too. Bye. Bye. And that's our show. The podcast is made possible with support from listeners. Please donate to help offset production costs at gofundme.com slash body kindness. And please rate and review the show when you have a moment. It really matters. Let's keep the conversations going on Facebook. Search body kindness and request to join the group for body kindness readers and listeners. Have a question for us to answer on a future episode? Visit bodykindnessbook.com slash question. Body Kindness books and audiobooks are available wherever books are sold. 
To request a signed print copy, visit bodykindnessbook.com slash order. For other questions about this podcast, please email info at bodykindnessbook.com.